Welcome to the Squared Circle Pit! With your host, Rob Paspani! Now entering the Squared Circle Pit, he is the gameplay producer for WWE 2K24, which is out now on all major platforms. And uh, I'm so excited to talk to you. Brian Williams has entered the Squared Circle Pit. What's up, Rob? I am here. Thank you for the inv- uh, thank you for inviting me into your pit. Uh, uh, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, it, it is a pleasure, Brian. Uh, we met a few years ago on our friend Aubrey's show, Straight Shoot, and I always respected your point of view. And I think it's so cool that you're working on the biggest wrestling video game out there. Yeah, man. Thank you, thank you. I was glad when you reached out uh, for this opportunity because yeah, it had, it's been a while since we've talked. Uh, but yeah, I remember yeah. you as well from uh, from Aubrey's show. Yeah, uh, and so well, let's talk about the game a little bit. It just came out. Yeah. Uh, I think it's so cool. It's such a massive undertaking. I've honestly not even hit all the different <laughs> features of it because there's just so much to do. Uh, and, and you're you're working with gameplay, so every year you guys have to put out a new game. So is what is the process? After the after a game is released to get ready for the next year, do you think about like what you can add to it? What are the improvements? Like like what is the brainstorming session like? Oh yeah, oh yeah. This is one of those things where because you know we we are an annual release and we're working with the WWE. I mean, we are never at a loss for new ideas or new things that we want you know would like to see added into the game because the WWE in the world of WWE is so large, right? I mean. Whether they're introducing new match types or there are match types that have been, you know, promoted in WWE for several years that we either maybe have been in our game once before or maybe uh, are, are have never been in our game. In the case of 2K24 with the additions of the ambulance match and the casket match, you know, we start each uh, each cycle of the game with a hearty list of items and things that the designers, myself, everybody on the team would like to do and you know, so it basically just becomes down to, OK, well, what can we reasonably do within the time frame that we have? Because, again, we come out every year, you know, time. We're always up against it. Um, so when we ship 2K23, which was also a very, very good game, you haven't checked that out. Recommend that, too. You know, we added the War Games match. Like that was our, our big new match type of the year. And that was one, something that the fans had been clamoring for for years. Ever since Triple H brought it back in the NXT, the fans every year, like, when are we going to get War Games? When are we going to get War Games? So we were able to deliver that in 2K23, and it's a big match. You know, it's the first time we've ever in the in the franchise had a match or any sort of arena situation. We had two rings placed side by side. So it really did take, you know, the entire team's effort from the environment, the artists, you know, engineering, the design, animation. It took a lot of us to kind of to stand that match type up. It was probably the biggest new match type that we had ever done, and you know, I know I'm biased, but I think, in my humble opinion, we we nailed it. So going into 2K24, you know, you know, match types are always a good place to start. And with the success that we had with War Games, we were like, you know what, fans have been, you know, long requesting that we bring back special guest referee. And so that was all. That was something that we just knew we had to deliver this year. Uh, we didn't you know, we didn't want to keep the fans waiting any more longer than they already had been. And I think because of what we went through and you know, implementing board games. I think the team just had a renewed sense of confidence that if we could do that, we could do anything, you know? It's like, we're the Avengers right now, you know? <laughs> Special guests, yes, do it. Ambulance match, put that on the list as well. Casket, yeah, let's go. Gauntlet, I hear fans want the gauntlet match back. And so we definitely took on a lot this year, but I think, again, just looking back at what we were able to accomplish in 23, just gave us the confidence that we could deliver on these new match types. Uh, and, and I believe that we have, I think these are some of the strongest new matches that we've added uh, in the franchise, especially the gauntlet match, which maybe doesn't sound like the sexiest because there's no, you know, there's no ambulance, there's no casket, no crazy prop, but just in terms of presentation, I think if you had ever seen a gauntlet match on Monday night, raw SmackDown, I think it has been, you know, faithfully recreated in WWE 2K 24. And as someone who just always liked the challenge, because I play the hell out of our games, too. It's like I, I've been working on this franchise for as long as I have because I am a fan, first and foremost. <laughs> and so I'm always looking for a challenge. And, you know, doing a 30-person gauntlet match on Legend, which is one of our achievements, I just I just love the the challenge inherent in that. And like I said, just all the uh, the music between the notes is something that we added to this match type that in years prior we just didn't have. You know, seeing the new entry come down with their entrance music, the wrestler in the ring, the superstar in the ring, you know, they kind of – 
whether they're tired or they're energetic, you know, they're prompting on the next opponent, like, come on, come get some. Uh, it's just, you know, I think the presentation just adds a, uh, just a ton to that match, but they're all great, you know? Yeah. And I think the presentation is really what makes your games stick out. I don't, I'm not trying to knock other game developers, but there was a competing video game that came out. And while it was, there were fun elements to it. If anything, it made me realize like, wow, 2K is such a bigger environment. There's so much more going on. Whereas with that one, uh, it was just like, okay, you could, you could wrestle, <laughs> you know, like you could just yeah, do the, the yeah. basic stuff, but like you can get so lost in 2K and, and it really is all the details that again, other games are, are missing because I'm sure it requires so much programming and stuff like what what would people not assume is much harder to to program than it looks on, on a video game screen oh like man what, what parts of, of the of the presentation well you know honestly it's it's, it's I, I had a couple of answers with this when you when you mentioned it but i i think i'll leave with this because so a lot of the um the ambulance match i'll use that as, as an example i'm talking about presentation when you start that match type with the entrances on you know, like I said, we we do our best to adhere to the presentation that to mimic what, what WWE does on their shows. And so when you start that match, you get the pre-match introduction where the ring announcer explains the rules. We have the overlay on the screen that tells you it's all very cool. This is an ambulance match and this is how you win. And then that segues into the entrances themselves, which is then followed by the introduction of the ambulance truck. And to look at it, you would think, oh, okay, you guys always do entrances. And yeah, you've added this, you know, match rules thing here and you tag, you know, the ambulance back and down here. Uh, but that actually proved to be very difficult. <laughs> and, 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 and it's one of those things where it's like to look at it, you wouldn't think so. It's like, oh, it kind of seems to just all work within the same flow, but it really doesn't. Uh, so anytime you have to add those presentational bits to our match start flow, we learned this year in particular that there are a lot of uh, hurdles uh, that we have to uh, kind of, you know, circumvent and jump through. But at the same time, uh, like I said, I work with some amazing, amazingly talented individuals um, from the engineering side, to, like I said, the artist design. And we had a lot of engineering support to help. You know, they diagnosed the problem and they're like, OK, we think we found the inroads to, to make this thing achievable as I knew they would, but it definitely took some time. And it's one of those things where, you know, to play it, you, you'd think that'd be the easiest thing to do. But uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's then, what I was wondering, especially with the, the new match types, you have to just co code a whole new section just to <laughs> bring in an right. ambulance, just, just to do that entrance, like you are saying. Exactly. And the same thing for the casket match, you know, a similar yeah. flow. And that's the thing too. The ambulance and the casket, they have, you know, they're very similar in nature in the sense that you have to throw the opponent into the object, shut the lid and you win. And so with the casket, it was the same thing where, you know, starts with the match rules, the superstars make their entrance, and then the referees, they uh, they roll the casket to ringside. Um, and I believe that we started with the casket first. And it was like once we were able to solve that riddle of how to insert these sequences within the, the normal entrance flow, once we got on to the ambulance, it was like, okay, cool. You know, kill two birds with one stone. We figured this out, started the ambulance match, and then we were off to the races, so... You know, it's always something. It's always like the weird things. You're like, wow, I can't believe this was so, <laughs> this was so time consuming. <laughs> and and then like when you know now that the game is out, are, have you already begun thinking about 2K25? Are there are there is there already like a wish list? Uh, is it something like where at the end of the development cycle you're like, let's leave this off for next year? Does that happen? Uh, well, for right now, I'm still basking in the in the glow of 2K24's <laughs> release, uh, still playing it, still working on DLC that we have uh, upcoming. We got five DLC packs on the horizon. Oh, okay. Um, so, the, so the 2K24 project isn't even done yet. There's still stuff to do. Oh, brother, yeah. There's there's still more, lots <laughs> more. Um, we got we got uh, you know CM Punk coming in a in a in a short amount of time here. He's in a, he's in our first DLC pack, which is themed around ECW. Uh, so, so Punk's going to be making his long, like, I think he hasn't been in the game almost like 10 years since 2K15 was his last uh, appearance in the franchise. So very excited to have him back as well as, you know, many others. I mean, the Dudleys, the Great Muda. I am so stoked that we are getting the Great Muda in our frame, in our game. I mean, we've never had him before, so that's super exciting. Um, but as far as the future, like like I said, there's always, we always have a wish list um, from the, and all of the respective teams do, the gameplay, create, uh, you mentioned the you know the size of our game. I mean, this game is huge, and it means a lot to different people. You've got 
some fans like myself who were just the diehard wrestling nerds who I just want to pick up the sticks and just get into the ring and start dropping folks on their heads. And then you've got the art, the artists out there who they spend a majority of their time in our, our creation suites, custom superstar, custom arena, you know, then universe where it's basically your own sandbox. Like you are the end all be all of your own WWE world. Uh, so yeah, so within all of those different disciplines, I mean, we always have new ideas and new things that we want to do. And my, my brain is always thinking about the next, I wish I could kind of turn it off sometimes, but at the same time, <laughs> I love my job. So, you know, I, I, I it definitely helps me, you know, when it comes time to, yeah. uh, to starting on the next one. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, the, the creator section is really where you see the, the hugeness of the game, especially comparing, like I said, to, to other games, just because there's so much control you have. And, and really with the online community, it's so impressive to see them, uh, you know, just create to a T indie stars. And like, like yeah. there was a whole thread on Twitter last week about, uh, Sabu creations and Sabu himself was like, no, actually, you know, my pants look, look like this. And then like, they kept <laughs> And he was complaining it. about his physique. He's like, yeah, I'm a little, yeah. little doughy there. And yeah, so I read that story and I thought that was so cool. It's like, we've, we've gotten to a point cause I've been working on this franchise since 2005, right? Like I'm an old head when it comes to this mm -hmm. and to see the advancements in particular within our custom superstar from the PS2 days where it was okay. You know, obviously we're dealing with, you know, older tech and everything, but the goal for me has always been if we can one day get to a point where the, you know, the characters you create within Credit Superstar can, can, can basically mirror that of what we ship with on this, you know, your AJ Styles, your Akira Tozawa's, your, you know, your, you know, Bronson Reeves, your Roman Reigns. Like if we can give players the tools to create characters that can stand side by side with them. Like that, then that's everything. And I think that we are we are as close as we've ever been to that. And you know, yeah. giving players the tools to to you know, and that's it. Like we are giving them all the artistic tools to go and to be as creative as they want. Whether it's you know, you know, creating real life people or you know, fictional characters. It's uh, it really is something to behold. And I'm I'm constantly impressed. My timeline on Twitter or X, I'm sorry, is just littered with you know, creative superstars that you know, uh, our fans are uploading and just sharing with everybody. It's yeah, it just filled us all with a sense of pride, you know, that we're giving the players the uh, the tools and the abilities to to do all this stuff. Yeah, and, and you mentioned, like, there's all the... The game means different things to different people. Me, personally, I'm addicted to the GM battle. Uh, there I you love, go, yeah. I love booking my own Fed, and it, I feel like uh, you made it more challenging this year because you can't just buy up as much talent as you want. Like, every, every turn, you can only buy so much talent, which really makes me have to think hard and it's such it's a completely different challenge than you know you're essentially like i'm essentially just dealing in a spreadsheet right exactly <laughs> in, yeah. in, in a very in a very uh, complicated graphical interface spreadsheet but that's but it's so addicting and it really reminds me of like the old ewr games uh which i, I played forever as as a kid and th that was completely text-based you know so it's very cool how you add how you guys added the, the interface elements to it and it makes it very fun to where you know i'm you don't feel like you're just it's just data entry really you know right <laughs> like yeah, it's just and, basic data entry <laughs> yeah that, and, and that moment in particular i mean i got you know i've been playing my retail copy and i haven't even dipped into you know my gm yet because again the game is so so large like i'm going through showcase and i'm going through my rise but i can't wait to get into my gm and i look at that mode and again it's one of those modes that you know the team brought back in 2k22 something that we had had in the, in the franchise you know years and years ago and fans have just been asking us please what can we do we i mean there are gms littered throughout w programming why can't we not have a gm mode once again and so to see it back and to and to your point i mean it's basically i look at gm mode it's like universe but with rules <laughs> you know what i mean it's, yeah yeah you know it's it's that but okay how you know what can you do to, to get that viewership up, to compete against the other show, like in all the micro decisions you have to make on a week to week basis. It really is in, enthralling and coupled with the fact that you can also play the matches or you can sim them. You know, it really gives you the best of both worlds. Uh, so shout out to Tyson. Uh, he, he's a designer on that mode. and he's, he's been doing some really good things with my GM. Yeah, I, th I thought it was because, uh, you know, I would see my friends play uh, other sports games like the football games and they're just in the 
you know, in, in the my GM version of those games. And it's just yeah. so fun of just like, you know, picking their team and whatever. And, and and it's cool that you translated that to the wrestling game. I think that that that's really fun. And it, it like that could just be its own game. But it's know, it's just yeah. w- one of one of the features in this giant game. Uh, so one of beyond, many. <laughs> beyond your your video game diet, what is your actual wrestling diet now? Like, what are you keeping up with? Uh, week oh, to man. Week? So, you know, like I said, I, at the start of the interview, I am a wrestling nerd, man. Like, there's not I, – I, I started out as a comic book nerd, and I still love my comics. But, I mean, wrestling is, is my jam <laughs> through and through. So, I, you know, of course, I, I keep uh, up to date with the WWE product, uh, you know, Raw, SmackDown, NXT. I love NXT. I, I think out of all the WWE shows, I look forward to NXT the most just because of how kind of wacky it can be sometimes. Like – Watching NXT week to week, you never know what you got to get. Uh, and that is always entertaining to me. Plus, I just like seeing the, the up and coming stars. Um, I like to look almost like almost going to take, you know, going back to GM mode. I kind of watch NXT and I'm like, OK, this guy, Trick Williams, this guy, this guy is going to be somebody on the, on, the, on the roster, on the main roster. I can just I can I can just tell. Like, I, I like watching the show and trying to guess, you know, who's going to make the transition to Raw, SmackDown and kind of really become that larger in life potentially a main event caliber superstar and you know i think for me trick is is that i think that guy's phenomenal i'm not sure how familiar you are with with trick yeah or, yeah 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 yeah, I'm, I'm very familiar. yeah it's funny because when he first showed up i was like oh like he's who, what they look for but carmelo hayes is so much more talented like like he's where the talent is but i feel you know in the time that they've been together trick has improved immensely where now yeah. it's like like you could make a case that he's the 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 bigger star over Carmelo. Yeah, I, I agreed. You know, uh, I think the first time I saw Trick on television, like his gift to gab was apparent. But you know, again, he's in developmental. His his in ring work was not up to uh, Carmelo's level. But Carmelo has been on the independence for years and it's kind of honed his craft. Right. You know, so yes, yeah, so it has been amazing to watch the improvement. You know, uh, year over year, you know, week to week, that someone like Trick. Uh, has developed into like his end ring is catching up to his promo ability and the same thing that i saw with tiffany stratton you know when she debuted in nxt and her character work her personality her promos were like boom like right there but it was in ring work that she had to work on but it was like every match that i would see her in same with trick you could you could see the improvements and and again i i just enjoy seeing that and you know i kind of get attached to these to these to these characters when they make it to the main roster and i root for them and uh and in my opinion I have said this internally within, you know, the team. I think I would not be surprised if Trick Williams is on the cover of our game sooner rather than later. I think that highly of the guy. Oh, that's awesome. That's cool. I think it's totally possible. He, he's he got total star quality. I feel when he, he was on uh, SmackDown, like he got a huge reaction. Huge reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but so, so, yeah, so, yeah, I kind of blew over the question about what I'm watching. But, yeah, uh-huh. all the WWE and you know, PLEs, of course. I try to consume as much wrestling as I can. I mean, obviously – you know, with my, you know, job responsibilities and, you know, just life outside of work, it's become harder to keep, you know, to stay current with like New Japan or AEW, but I do my best to, but again, like any time, my, I, my wrestling viewing is prioritized. WWE is always at the top of that. And then anything else I can fit in, I try to fit in. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, yeah, there's only so many hours in the day. Uh, I, I've really fallen off on New Japan. It used to be my favorite promotion, but I just feel like it's not. They're not delivering the quality. Like well, ever since the pandemic, which yeah. obviously not their fault. It's just it's not the same level. And you know, so many people have been, have left that I really enjoy. That there's not that many big stars that I just know will always deliver uh, on yeah. those shows. Agreed. Uh, agreed. Uh, I, anytime Zack Sabre has a match, I'll check it out. Ishii, I'll check it out. But I'm like you. I, And I still love New Japan, but yeah, to your point, like the pandemic really did them no favors. And uh, But, you know, I'm rooting for them. I root for all the all of pro wrestling. I, want, I just yeah. want all of pro wrestling to be healthy and, you know, give these talents, these men and women, as many places to work and to uh, apply their trade. I'm all about that. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you that just the same, like just because I don't follow it week to week doesn't mean it shouldn't exist. Uh, right. And, and it's it, the more places there are to wrestle, the more new styles could evolve. And, you know, like we could see cool new shit. Uh, that was just the, the big bummer of the, you know, after WCW and ECW fell, there was just not yeah. enough variety in wrestling. It was only like one way to 
to deliver it. Uh, and with AEW, I think what, what's cool too is I feel uh, because they're so fast paced and, and they just deliver all these crazy dream matches on their shows. I think it's also improved the quality of WWE as well because WB has been on a run of incredible pay-per-views and, yeah. and, and it's interesting too, because, you know, I feel like the work rate has improved in WWE, but also it almost, it's beyond that because it's not like they're doing the same show as AEW. They've just gotten really good at what WWE does, which is yeah. crazy storytelling, like exactly really exactly. great, compelling stuff. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. And I will say, I mean, Rob, like, like I said, I've been working on this franchise for a long time. I can't remember a time. Because that because it doesn't exist. There hasn't been a time that I've been on this franchise where WWE has been this hot as a promotion. Uh, like they really are on fire. I mean, they're 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 selling out damn near week to week. You know, anytime they have a a, a pay per view of PLE, that thing is sold out in like an, in an instant. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, it's a it's a fun time to be a wrestling fan. It really is, and especially with WrestleMania right around the corner. You got The Rock back cutting promos on SmackDown, the the Rock Rock concert and all that. It's just it's awesome, man. Yeah, The Rock is really delivering. I was a little concerned that it would be kind of, he'd be kind of phoning it in and just a shell of his former self, just the same catchphrases. But I'm loving w this evolution of his character. I'm so yeah. invested in, in what a jerk he is. <laughs> the final boss. You know? Yeah, the final boss. I like it. I I, yeah, I believe too. it, and I think I think it's a great character to have, and it really brings together the history of WWE as well, and, and it gives cre like it brings up the value of Roman and Cody to be associated with The Rock, even though they even yeah. had, haven't had a match yet. Seth, <laughs> the, the, the jury's still out just because of how how bad The Rock is clouding him, but I mean he's getting <laughs> a boost in that sense as well, just to be in the ring with The Rock, right? Yeah, yeah, he totally is, and and it's funny. This is you know one example of how I can never shut my brain off when it comes to this game. When The Rock, when he when he mentioned that he was the final boss, and he said it a couple times, in my head I'm thinking, huh, final boss. That sounds like a game mode, something we can do in the game. <laughs> it, it, just, it just got me thinking of things that we could do. So it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it makes Rob. me think of the, of the the old Mortal Kombat uh, thing where you go up the, the, the thing. Towers, and then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. the rock would be the top tower. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, so with the 2K game, like, have you interacted with, like, r with wrestlers? Like, like, what's the craziest fanboy internal fanboy moment obviously because you have to be professional but you're like oh my god i can't believe i can't believe because of my job i get to hang out with this person and we're doing this particular thing uh yeah so funny you should ask that you know drew gulak is <laughs> has sort of become like a de facto member of the team okay uh, that's yeah cool. he he contributed and he assisted a lot on the uh development of my rise um this year um he attended the mocap shoots he was pretty much like you know helping the uh the mocap wrestlers uh with the thing that they needed to capture while also you know giving the writers and the designers feedback uh just to make everything that much more authentic and believable from a pro wrestling standpoint um and he's just a great ambassador of the game um we had an event for the for royal rumble and we did these uh inside inside the ropes uh shows where it was like it was myself creative director lanell jinx uh, some of the influencers, uh, Peter uh, Rosenberg was the host. And at the same time, we had, you know, Drew Gulak was part of the panel, uh, Johnny Gargano, Xavier Woods. And uh, and I'm sitting next to these guys. And as I look at my life, you know, I'm, I'm chopping it up about this video game that I love that I've been working on. And I get to do it in tandem with the talents that are in the game. Um, and I, 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 I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel a little something inside where I, but again, professional, right? You got to keep that. Of course. Keep that contained. People are looking it, at you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, but they're all, but they're all such a, gr a great group of people. Uh, and the fact that the, the talents are as involved with the franchise now and that they enjoy the game, they love the game. Xavier Woods covers it on up, up, down, down all the time. It's just, you know, that's, that's when that's, it, that has let me know that we're doing something right where the talents want to be involved with, you know, promoting the game, um, helping out with the development of the game. And that had never been the case in years past. So I think I, I look at that as nothing but a positive and for, you know, for the game, for the fans that they are getting the most authentic WWE product uh, that we can provide to them. It's uh, it's been great. 
Yeah, and if, it, it's interesting too when when the uh, wrestler scores come out, it's kind of become a big debate now. Like like it, it becomes like when 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 there's like a year end award or something now where the wrestlers themselves are upset. That, you know, they're they're yeah. like, oh, I'm, I'm bigger than a seventy five. You know, I'm tougher. Than... <laughs> I would you... like to speak to that real quick. Sure. I, I I helped with the with the overall ratings um, this year, and you know we 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 mentioned that yes we're. For 2K24, we wanted to kind of do a different approach um, because in years past, 23, 22, we, as a team, we just felt that there was an overabundance of characters in the 90s or the high 80s, and which is great, I'm sure, for the talent. Like, oh, yeah, of course, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a 98, I'm a 97. That makes sense to me. But for, for us on the design side, you know, we're really big on character differentiation and making sure that when you select the character that they are of, you know, their appropriate hierarchy on the card because you know not everybody can be a roman reigns you know what i mean like you have people that are at the tippity top of the card and then you have people that are not and so we just wanted to utilize a greater degree of our of our uh, overall scale to reflect that but there's no slight on on anybody but i i i saw and i, I talked to some of the the talents about it and you know greg miller who hosts and does the ratings reveal uh, he's he's an old friend of mine uh, he did his best to try to explain you know that we're you know doing that we did something different this year and that we're basically just looking at the last calendar year and that's what we do for the for the current talents we say okay what has Zelina Vega been on from the time we shipped last year to now like how's her rise been Akira Tozawa um Sami Zayn Bronson Reed Braun Breaker you know we kind of take all that into account to kind of see you know did they hold championships were they winning more than they were losing are they consistently pushed in a certain area? All that goes into into effect. But it has been cool to see on programming, like when matches occur and they'll put the game rating of the characters on the screen. Uh, I, I love that. They've never done that before. And I think it's yeah. really cool. And I, and I hope they keep doing that. And because it gives the, you know, the announcers, the commentators, something to discuss too. Which is, you know, which is fun. It's like, oh, Graves and Wilder's not happy about this 74, you know. And, and they're discussing your rankings. That, that, that's yeah. got to be a trip, too. So does WB have a say at all in, in these numbers? Like, do you present the numbers to them and they sign off on them? Or uh, is it mostly you guys deciding? It's mostly us deciding. Um, oh, okay. It's mostly us. There were, there, you know, of course, there's always, you know, outlier situations. But I would say it's like 98% us, you know, uh, the W they trust us, you know, we're, we're, I think we, we, we are trusted partners with them and, you know, we're just always trying to do right by them and by their talents. Right on. Okay. That's very interesting to know. I, I assumed it was like a directive from, from them. Like, not that I think that, you know, triple H is <laughs> they're making, <laughs> making the list, but uh, and that's interesting to see that you guys are the ones. That do. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this is the intersection. I like to say of rock music and pro wrestling. I want to talk a little bit about music. I'm not sure how much a uh, rock rapper, like what music do you listen to typically? So I listen to a lot of hip hop. I mean, I, I do listen mm -hmm. to rock uh, as well. Um, but I'll, I'll be honest, man, like as I've gotten older, I kind of feel like I've turned into that get off my, 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 my lawn type, <laughs> type, type of cat where it's like for hip hop, for example, like I, I pretty much am not listening to any any new artists. I think for me, maybe around 2010 or 2011 was maybe the last time that I kept up with, you know, these new acts that are out there. And I'm basically just going back and just listening to stuff that I listened to when I was in college, you know, uh, late 90s up to maybe, you know, 2010. But uh I love all I love all types of music, you know. Uh, I've got some ACDC in my collection. I've got a lot of I guess it was I guess it was called new metal back in mm -hmm. the early two thousands. Uh, I got some of that stuff. Uh, Deftones, I love the Deftones. But yeah, most what, of my music, what, what are your big artists? Yeah, like like that doesn't have to be rock. Just in general, yeah. like who are your who's your Mount Rushmore or whatever? Oh geez, Mount Rushmore. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh man, Tupac would have to be up there. Uh, just general principle. I, I love Pac. Like he's yeah, that's. It's my guy, Tupac, Jay Z. This shouldn't be a hot take, but if, if it comes across as one, I don't mean it. I, for me, I just look at this objectively. I think Jay Z is hands down probably the best hip hop artist of all time, and I say that in terms in terms of his his artistry, of his lyricism, of his lyrics, his sales. Like he was one of those guys who was able to be super pop, super commercial, and at the same time maintain his level of. Um, of, of lyricism to the point where it's like, yeah, he's got a catchy beat and everything. And you can just listen to the beat and the chorus and be like, oh, this is a hit, this is a jam. I love dancing to this part of this. But even the lyrics mean something. Like, I think he's one of the all time, all time greats. So Jay's got to be up there. So that's a Jay, Pac, 
I'll throw Biggie in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get clowned for this, but I don't care. I, I represent him. Uh, Master P, man. Okay, man, not, not, there you go. Not so, Talk about a wrestling crossover. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? And, and, and obviously, I mean, I'm I'm not, you know, ignore the fact that Master P was not the best uh, lyric lyricist out there ever, but. I just loved what he did back in the mid '90s uh, to, to early 2000s with with No Limit and the hustle and the grind that he had to make himself a millionaire a hundred times over, and he was just a force in music for a period of time. And I just respected his his hustle so much, and uh, and I, and I enjoyed the music. I've got the No Limit Tank tattoo on my arm. Like I oh, nice. I love I love No Limit uh, in their heyday. You know they were my. Were jam, you losing man. it when they showed up in WCW? Like was because that, that's you know that seemed like a very crazy crossover. You didn't you didn't see such modern artists <laughs> in <Okay>. wrestling. <laughs> so here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about that, Rob. So when 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 Master P and them were doing their thing in WCW, I wasn't even watching wrestling yet. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you know my my fandom of wrestling started. I would say maybe like 1998 and it was slow because I had friends who were into it and they would, you know, try to invite me to go to shows or, Hey, come on, let's watch Monday night raw. And I was like, I don't want to watch the wrestling stuff. And I eventually <laughs> did. I relented. My friend Amir kept bugging me. This is my second year in college. And I went over there just to hang out with him and the rest of the guys and everything. I'm like, yeah, you can, you watch the rest. And I'll, I'll, you know, I'm just here to chill, but it was seeing the rock for the first time. And he was in the ring. He wasn't wrestling. He was just cutting the promo. And I remember like, I'm like, Amir. I'm like, who's this brother right here, man? It's like, oh, no, that's The Rock, man. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, who is The Rock? Like, he, just, he just he just caught me in a way that up until that point, no other wrestler really had. And it was from then on, I, 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 and again, it took some time, but I got, I was, you know, coming over watching more of Monday Night Raw. And they would occasionally flip back to, to Nitro. Uh, and they would tell me, oh, yeah, these two shows are going on at the same time. They're going through this war. So I was basically a very late fan into pro wrestling. And so by the time I really got into it in earnest, where it was like, okay, okay it's WWF, WWE, and that's it. Didn't follow, didn't watch WCW. But over the years, I got more into just all of pro wrestling. I, I learned about New Japan. I learned about all the independent scene. And it was just like the blinders were lifted off my eyes of this of this world that I just was quickly falling in love with. And ever since then, it's been off to the races. So I've seen clips of Master P and the No Limit crew in uh, in WCW uh, since then. But yeah. I kick myself because I'm like, man, like as, as big of a fan that I was, I really wish I was I was more uh, tuned in back then but yeah it's pretty cool it, it it totally fell off the rails after like a week or two they started being the, the heat in a weird way like they were presented as the faces but they there was like a weird like racism like like undertone and where they was, became like the heels was <laughs> Colonel, was, wasn't colonel robert parker was he uh, like a manager for like the opposing side against them so wasn't he? yeah like the, so the opposing the team was, was like the Jeff west Jarrett? texas rednecks it was uh mr perfect kurt hennig uh, Barry Windham, Kendall Windham, and I think Horace Hogan. I think that was the. Okay, and then maybe okay. they brought in Vincent as well. He was in their crew, yeah. uh, the old, former Virgil. And the, so they made a song, Rap is Crap. And that got over like they became, it was it was so odd it was such a it was such a southern thing i feel because you know they're in like you know duluth and <laughs> whatever you know yeah yeah it, well master p and no limit they were you know a southern i mean i guess they were also southern yeah, yeah that's true New Orleans, that's true yeah. right 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 uh yeah it, it, it was a little weird it was fun for a few weeks though and then they introduced like a no limit soldier as a wrestler and it was just this jacked up guy jacked up, yeah I remember seeing that. <laughs> yeah it was wild uh so what, what was the wrestling man <laughs> yeah i mean that's i mean it was of its time obviously it, it shouldn't hold if, if it holds up there's a problem <laughs> you know right. like it, it's a good thing that it doesn't hold up it, it's of its time uh what was your breakthrough point to the indies and like new japan stuff like when you started diving into seeing what else was out there beyond just WWE and WCW. This would this would have occurred maybe like 2005, I want to say, because that's when I left. So I started at THQ. I was a tester and I joined the W franchise in 2005. And I want to say it was towards the end of 2005. I had recruited a friend of mine from QA, uh, my friend Dan, who was still, you know, buzz to this day. I kind of, because we were looking for another designer to come on to help with the create modes and stuff. And I recommended Dan and Dan was a huge wrestling fan. That's and that's one of the reasons why I recommended him. So he got the job, 
And one day we were in the office and he was like, hey, man, I got these uh, these tickets to this PWG show. Uh, would you want to go? And I was like, PWG, what what is that? They go pro wrestling gorilla, you know, they're holding, they're holding shows. And we both lived in the valley in, in Los Angeles. Where are you where are you based, by the way? I'm in New York. You're but in New York. I, but okay. I've been to a BTW show in, yeah, in yeah. Reseda. It was so, nuts. <laughs> so this is before Reseda. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, this this wow. is before okay. the Reseda venue. Yeah. Not, it, it was it was close to Reseda, but it wasn't the Reseda venue. And I remember me and him going, and it just blew my mind. It was, I was like, what is this? It was just some of the most hard hitting, fast paced wrestling that I'd seen at that point. And I'm seeing guys for the first time, uh, Claudio Castagnoli, Kevin Steen. The first time I saw uh, Owens, Kevin Owens, then Kevin Steen was at that show. And I remember and and I, I feel guilty for even admitting this, but I was that, you know, kind of superficial guy. Like I remember seeing when, when Kevin Steen came in, I, he you know had the T-shirt on and everything. And I'm like, who is this guy? Yeah, like, he doesn't yeah, look yeah. professional. And <laughs> five minutes into the match, my jaw was on the ground. I could not believe what this man was doing. It completely turned me around to him. It was like one of those things where I'm like, okay, never, ever judge a book by its cover ever again. Uh, but that first PWG show was everything to me. It was like the light went off over my head. And it introduced me to so many talents, a lot of who are in WWE now. Uh, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens. Um, just it, it, was, it was tremendous. And from that point on, I was at every PWG show for a solid four-year run. Championship ready from Hollywood. They would hold shows in LA. I'd go to those. Raw GM Adam Pierce was on, was wrestling on those That's shows. Right. He was the champ. Shout, he was the champ. Shout out to shout out Mr. Pierce. And he also did a lot of motion capture work for us uh before he, oh, he cool. uh, joined WWE. Yeah, he was when we when we added Baron Corbin into the game, Pierce was the one who did a lot of his motions, like especially like his end of days. Uh Adam Pierce captured that. Uh love Adam Pierce. He's he's such a cool dude. Um, uh, but yeah, but to, but to answer your question, like that kind of is really what kickstarted me. And then I got into New Japan uh, shortly after that, working with Ukes, our former developer, because uh, they own New Japan for a time. And I remember they would send, they sent me a couple of copies of Wrestle Kingdom, uh, which was a uh, Japanese-only pro wrestling video game. You couldn't buy it in the States, but it was, you know, it was New Japan, Pro Wrestling Noah, All Japan. And playing that game just completely floored me. And I got into New Japan, got into Pro Wrestling Noah. Uh, my first pro wrestling show in japan was a pro wrestling noah uh event so i got to see uh misawa i got to see uh, marafuji kenta and just just amazing man so i cool. like to say i, I could wax poetic about wrestling all, all day <laughs> that's awesome yeah and i'm sure like you said we're we'll going to the pwd show i think another big part of it too is with wdb it's the arena experience it's a little less it's very less intimate you know it's an arena it's you know at least five thousand people with pwg it's a few hundred people right so you're just right there you can't look away from the action you see the faces you see you hear the you hear the grunts as they fall you know take the bumps uh it's much no guardrails there are yeah, no guardrails yeah, yeah 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 so, so i could see that being a, a big eye-opening moment all right, man. Well, this was great. It was really fun uh, talking and, and catching up and, and learning some cool things about the, the video game. I think you guys did a great job with, with 2K24. I'm still, like I said, I'm still powering my way through it. I'm, I'm just ad addicted to the My GM mode, so I'm kind of uh, <laughs> not doing it much of the other stuff. Yeah, uh, but... I definitely yeah, I, I definitely recommend you check out the showcase if you haven't already. You know, we'll be oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, so, I started playing that. WrestleMania. I, I love the layout, like the time, like the the design of the game is so beautiful. It's so fun to watch. And yeah, I played like the first two matches on the, on the showcase. It's really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Awesome. Man. Well, Brian, thank you so much for hanging out. Pick up a WWE 2k, uh, uh, wherever you get your video games, uh, probably in the video game platform store. Now that's, yes, <laughs> I highly recommend it. Is, is that, but yes, thank you so much, Brian. And, uh, thank for you. entering the pit. <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs>